It's power meter version 3.3 .3 update time. I like to give an update because I seem to be one of the few people who actually uses a homemade power meter long term. Or at least other people don't seem to bother giving updates. So this power meter has now done another four and a half thousand miles since the last update. Although that isn't really that much of a mileage, I do use this every week. I used about three or four days per week. So it has seen all types of weather throughout the year. As you can see by the, the mud on here. And um, it's now causing a few little issues. Um, the one I've got it off the bike for at the moment is the little push button here. It was sold as waterproof and like a lot of stuff on eBay, it was not really quite what it says it was. Um, so I'm going to swap that out. I do cover it with a bit of tape, as you can see from the mess around here. That needs to be cleaned off, but um, eventually the water manages to seep in and gets right inside the, the little switch and causes it to sometimes randomly turn on or turn off. So I'll get that swapped out. The other issue I had this um, autumn, beginning of the autumn as the weather started to deteriorate, was the coating I put on here on the strain gauges and round over the the wiring underneath the HX711 board had started to peel away from the metal and so eventually water started to seep underneath and got in somewhere and was then causing some serious drifting values, um, drifting issues um, with the values and so the power was going way off so I stripped all that back. I'll show you some photographs of that process. I've now covered it with this stuff, which I had actually used already on the HX711 board. It seemed to perform very well, and it's doing quite well on the strain gauges so far. So I've also, as I hadn't tested the accuracy of this power meter for over two years, so it was since the end of September 2022. It was the last time I actually checked it against another power meter. And here's the data, which I would say is not too bad, considering I've not done anything to the power meter for the last couple of years, except mess around with the coating on the strain gauges, which I thought may have messed up the, um, the calibration a little bit, but it seems like it hasn't, actually. You have to remember, obviously, this is just... An average of one ride not like the hundred rides I did before so it's just a basic representation of how it's performing right now also I uh, need to note that my left right power balance um, is slightly off it's about two to four percent weaker on my right leg meaning that the homemade power meter will always under read and you can see that in the data Although there is a few areas like here and around about there and here where it under reads by more than I would have expected. And there's another area around here as well where it's clearly under reading. But the, um, the difference does seem to be similar regardless of whether the power is higher or lower. Uh, suggesting it is a zeroing issue, not a calibration issue. So I'm not sure whether that was always like that. Um, I seem to remember it being a bit better than that at not drifting. Maybe there's some sort of deterioration of um, the strain gauges or the HX711 board and it's causing that. Maybe it's not quite right or maybe it's just a thinner coating on the strain gauges. Perhaps it's picking up temperature differences quicker than it used to before. I'm not sure, but in general, I'm pleased with that, considering um, it's been a couple of years and it's showing signs of being at least fairly consistent over time, this power meter, which is great. Um, at one point I was thinking it was perhaps beginning to under-read, but I think that's, in reality, I think that's just my fitness is perhaps not quite what it was. I don't cycle as much as I used to. Um, I've had other things I've been busy with in the past couple of years. 
Um, so yeah, that's the end of this little quick update, and thank you for watching.